Hi, and welcome back to week four of this month's theme, choosing the path of least resistance when training, retraining, or rehabilitating a horse. I'm Caroline Bast of the Dow of Horsemanship. This is Everything Horses and More YouTube channel. We are delivering a snippet of the full length video that can be found in my video library. And so this is the last week of March's theme, choosing the path of le least resistance. And again, like I've been asking each week, leave me a comment on what you see or ask a question, because as I keep mentioning, sometimes a path of least resistance doesn't always look like the least resistance, meaning things can get stressful when you are trying or you're helping a horse rehabilitate. It's not always easy and it's not always pretty. So thank you and I look forward to your comments. All right, welcome back. So a couple of things. Whenever you're working with either a young horse or a, a wild horse, I wouldn't necessarily say a new horse. But when, when you have a horse that doesn't have any foundation or any training or any real handling, um, the pulling and the rearing is pretty much going to happen all the time for a little while. So each day I have specific purposes for why I do what I do. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about it. Tuesday was really my first day touching him all over, pretty much all over. And I obviously wanted to make that a very enjoyable, stress-free experience. Um, also, the purpose for all of that was more of a bonding and enjoying each other. And then yesterday, you know, I'm ready to move on and push, uh, push him out of his comfort a little bit more. And so by bringing in one or two of the horses, three of the horses, you know, that added extra stimulation for him and excitement. He's already formed really good friendships with many of my horses. So they, they play together outside the round pen. They spend a lot of time together. And I knew that I, you know, I needed to keep working on picking up his feet and being a little more assertive, even though I was talking a lot about the path of least resistance. It's always in the back of my head when I'm working, you know, how can I make it so it's, it's stress-free for him? It, the most that I can give him, the best that I can give him. How can I make sure that I'm not fighting with him and that it's not a big confrontation? He doesn't feel overfaced, overwhelmed by, by what he's learning. And sometimes you can't prevent all of that. It's just something that you want to keep in the back of your head. As a human, you know, we're so linear. We're so aggressive by nature as a predatorial species and he's a prey. So he's the opposite. He's non-linear. He's thinking about how do I get out of this situation? And so he's looking for five to 10 different ways of, of getting away and getting out of it where we're so direct and we can be very forceful. And so I just want you to keep that mindset, that awareness that this is just who we are as a human being, as a species, as a predatorial mind a set that it's very intrinsic and, and um, natural for us to just bam, bam, bam. And I'm trying to teach you to just take a step back, take more time to pause, make sure you're paying attention to how he feels about the situation and how you approach the situation. And so yesterday with the rearing, that was absolutely unavoidable. I know with all of my experience with babies too. At some point, they're all going to do that. And it's because they want to be with their friends. And they're like, I don't want to be here. And it's, you know, a level of frustration, a little bit of a tantrum. Um, definitely for him, that was his comfort and his natural fight instinct to say, hey, I'd rather be out here with them. I don't want to go back into that round pen with you. And so it's normal. I expected that to happen. Had I not had a third person here, you know, I've got Sabrina behind the camera and then it's just me. If I had, hadn't had his owner here, what would I have done? So you have to think about those things. And I just would have had Sabrina put the camera down 
and on the picnic table face it towards me and Sabrina would have gotten behind him like Sophia did, his owner, and just helped drive him back into the round pen. Even though I was talking a lot about the path of least resistance, it's always in the back of my head when I'm working, you know, how can I make it so it's, it's stress-free for him, it, the most that I can give him. Today, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start out really light like this and then if we're, we can't make progress I'll just put them back online you guys so this is what our third day we've really been working on so there's nothing I can do if he walks away so <sighs> this is why we'll just put him back on and I'm just gonna act normal yep good he's got to get used to all of this Right? Can't keep babying them. Good boy, it's our third week. Yeah. So just wait. He's really tense. Everybody always just wants to jump and put the halter on. Come here. See if he can accept this. Not just tolerate it. Come here, boo. Come here. And I see you looking. You gonna smell it? Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, you're starting to learn to put your nose in there. That's awesome. That's just awesome. They're not stupid, you guys. <laughs> he realizes that when he puts his head in this halter, I can hold him, right? I can hold his hand and help him, and I can also hold him. So a lot of what's taught in a general or natural horsemanship way when starting restarting horses is they flood them with this type of desensitizing and the horse is panicking and panicking and going into flight and trying to run here and try, trying to run there and it's all about the horse moving their feet right so what the people do the trainers so to speak is as soon as the horse stops moving their feet they stop with the pressure but the horse is still tight and stressed and so they think they're teaching the horse something, right? They're not teaching the horse anything. The horse is actually teaching them that, it, that every time I stop, you're going to leave me alone. Yep, you're all right. You're all right. So I'm going to start on this side with the, uh, let me see if I can turn him over here towards the camera with picking up his, his uh, hooves. Good boy. There's a little bit of shallow breath there, a little bit of stress. I want to pay attention to that. I want him to not, I would like him to relax and not be all stressed out. Good, thank you. Awesome, we've got that down, don't we guys? I come down and he picks up. Good. <laughs> I will not grab their feet. I want my horse to help me. I want them to be thinking, participating. Um, and this is an excellent way to teach, especially big drafts like Zor. As soon as you, as soon as they see and your intention's there and you've, you touch them, they already push over to the opposite leg, shift their weight for you, um, run your hand down, and he knows what I'm going to ask. Yeah. You going to help me out? <laughs> what you doing? It's nice that you're just chilling out, looking at me while I do this. I like that. So I'm going to pinch the chestnut now. Just get him to lift up. I'm going to stay on it. Pinch it. Keep pinching. Pinching till he lifts. Of course, he wants to bite. So every time I... Yep, I'm not trying to be annoying, buddy. You could get cow kicked and bit. So just be careful. Thank you. All right, so let's work on our backup. Start out as light as you want to end up. Pretty nice. Yesterday I had to get one bump bump. Good boy, we're getting there. We're getting there. Backup's really hard. Uh, triggers a, a horse's natural um, inclination and instinct again to go through pressure. Remember, they're oppositional by nature. So 
every horse, especially domesticated. I've worked with so many older horses, restarting them for clients, and the backup is like impossible. And they pin their ears, they'll charge at you, throw a shoulder in. It's a defense mechanism most of the time. Very, very rarely is it a disrespect, like you're told. So just shake that rope to interrupt him from going that way. I'm also going to twirl. So this is all rhythm. He can get out of the way. Good. So he's learning how to move away from pressure. All right. Excellent little man. You get another A+. Plus. Every day is an A+. Plus. Every day is an A+. Plus. He's like, I'm out of here. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you again another day. Every day, I'm always thinking about what? The path of least resistance. What's in it for the horse? Consider the horse. And as I always say in my mantras, make every moment with your horse purposeful and teachable. Purposeful and teachable. All right. May you always be one with your horse.